Jaguar F-Type convertible. The windscreen will act as a barb and prevent it from being extracted again. A bit like one of those fish that swim up your cock. Hello, welcome to James May Solves the Internet's Motoring Problems. Snappy title, I know. Let's get straight on with it because I have uh, a tweet here from Jack. Dear Dr. Slow, points already for the correct uh, form of address. I am 18 years old and have just bought my first car, an old Ford Fiesta. I like it, but it's not very exciting. I'm thinking about modifying it to make it louder and a bit faster, but my dad says it will be worth a lot less if I do. Do you think it's okay to modify your car or is it better to leave it stock? Well, <coughs> Jack, um, you will see elsewhere on my tribe my feature Unpimp My Ride, in which I am a, well, an evangelist really for keeping things entirely standard. I think if you want to modify your car, if it's a means of self-expression, if you're thinking of it like you might think about doing a watercolour painting or composing a song on your guitar because your girlfriend's just dumped you, fine. That's good, but the honest truth is, it won't be very good because Ford design and build cars and they know what they're doing. I don't know what you do for a living, but I'd like to wager that it's not that because if it were, you'd know not to do it. So Jack, yes, no, do it, but don't do it because your dad's right. Good, that's the end of Twitter. Right, let's move on to Drive Tribe, which is where all the quality correspondence comes from, obviously. Sue Hensby, hello, says, who came up with the idea of automatic rain sensors? She means for windscreen wipers, I presume. Either they're too slow to identify there's enough rain on the windscreen to clear it, or they instruct the wipers to work furiously when there is a slight miss. No, you're absolutely right about this, because I have them on my uh, i3 BMW, and they don't really work. You're quite right. They're, they do either go mad or they just sit there resolutely not wiping the windscreen whilst it fills up with water and you think I didn't turn them on did I? And then you touch it again and you've actually turned them off. I think if you can't drive along and recognise that there is water on the windscreen of your car, the bit you have to look through in order to see where you're going, a fundamental of driving, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. In answer to who invented them, um, it was the Japanese. I think it might have been Daihatsu, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so um, don't pick me up on that one. I believe it was the Japanese, probably Daihatsu, but I'm not entirely sure of that. And they are a terrible idea, I agree. So from Drive Tribe, Matthew Lang asks, are there any decent driving roads in the southeast of England that are not full of cyclists on a sunny Sunday? Don't worry about the door, we're in a pub. Um, well, the answer, Matthew, is I don't know, to be honest, because my house is in the southwest of England, which is not particularly full of cyclists, to be honest. There are a few. Um, but the bigger question is really, why, why worry about cyclists? I mean, there are never that many of them. Bicycles are very narrow. It's quite easy to get past them. Wait until it's clear. You can give them a wide berth and just go for it. Please let's not have any of this road sectarianism. We have enough common enemies like potholes, legislators, bad drivers, bad riders, dogs, goats, donkeys walking around in the road, ice, mud. All of those things affect all of us. Don't worry about cyclists or stop living in a terrible bit of the country and move to the nice bit. Don't worry about cyclists. Don't buy into the anti-cycling thing. It's it's not worth it. Live free. Live in peace. Live with your brothers and sisters in love. Tanner Chambers. Dearest James, I am writing to ask for your guidance in solving a new and distressing problem with my forerunner. When driving on level ground and using little to no throttle to maintain speed, a terrible juddering begins. If you put your foot down to accelerate or brake sharply, it goes away. It seems to be at its worst between 40 and 45 miles per hour. This is agony, please advise. P.S. It is not causing any warning lights to illuminate. Help me, Captain Slow, you are my only hope. Crikey. Well, uh, it, it does sound like something like a wheel bearing or something like that, which is vibrating, possibly at a, you know, a harmonic um, resonance between 40 and 45 miles per hour on level ground but when you load up that wheel i.e. because you're accelerating or braking the brake brakes are clamping the disc stopping the problem it goes away so i would take i would stop driving that is my honest advice i have to say that because i don't want to go <laughs> don't worry about it uh, tanner it'll be fine and then the wheels falls off and you're killed see a specialist 
that's quite a serious one in my view. That's a genuine piece of consumer advice generated by this James May Answers the Internet's Motoring Problems. May. Abrupt. I have a lot of people telling me I should be driving an electric vehicle, but I refuse to purchase one, yet lose the argument with those such people, probably because they're eco-mentalists. Can you give me a good argument response into why gasoline brackets petrol? I did know, thank you. Vehicles are better than electric vehicles. Well, Gleb, um, the argument you want is that range and convenience make you know, petrol brackets, gasoline cars uh, more convenient, and convenience is a great driver in the world, but I'm not sure you're entirely right. I mean, we like cars because they perform, and electric cars are going to outperform petrol engine cars very soon. They already do in many respects. You can like cats and dogs. You are allowed to like two things. Right, from Drive Tribe, Reed Kievers says, James, I drive a 1985 Jaguar XJ6 Sovereign and adore it immensely. Yes, yeah, very nice car actually, but people keep telling me that I need to buy a more modern, safe and reliable car. I'm not sure what to do and to this extent, my question is, what should I suggest these people shove up their asses when they tell me to buy a new car? Um, well, the simple answer to that is a Jaguar F-Type convertible. The windscreen will act as a barb and prevent it from being extracted again. A bit like one of those fish that swim up your cock. That's the end of the questions. I hope you've enjoyed James May Answers the Internet's Motoring Problems. And if you have enjoyed this, please leave some comments on the page and leave some more questions as well.